Okay, we're going to create a list of strategies that we're going to use to solve face relationship problems in geotechnical engineering. I have written them down. I'm, I'm going to reveal them little by little as we talk about them. The first one is to recognize that the soil is made of three components. The solids, which are the particles or grains, the water, W, and the air, right? Now, the solids are the solids, the grains, and the water and or air are present in the voids. Okay? So we know that. Number two, always remember that the mass density of water is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed or one gram per cc. A cc is a centimeter cubed. So this is information that you should have, you should know it, before you even start the problem. All right, number three. Let me just reveal the whole thing here. Number three. If you are given, or if you know, the mass density of the solids, that is, the mass density of the minerals that make the particles, right? Basically the average one for all minerals in the soil. If you do know it, then you automatically can determine the specific gravity of solids, which is simply the known value of mass density of solids divided by the mass density of water, which you know. Very simple, right? Now, if you are not given the mass density of solids, but you are given or you know the specific gravity of solids, then it's the same thing. If you know this one, then you can use the same formula to get the mass density of solids, which would be the specific gravity of solids, which is given, times the mass density of water. All right. Now, what happens if you are not given the mass density of solids and you are not given the specific gravity of solids? Right? So if you are not given any of these, then it is appropriate for calculations to assume the value. The best is actually to measure it in the lab, right? But if you are essentially calculating without knowledge of a measured value of rho s or a measured value of gs, which is essentially the same, right? Then you can assume gs for the purpose of calculating uh, what you need to calculate for the problem. And you can assume the value that is the most common value, which is 2.65. This means, therefore, that if you assume a value of 2.65, then that translates to a mass density of solids of 2.65 grams per cc. Okay? Number four. If the soil is said to be saturated, it means that all the voids are full of water. Therefore, the volume of voids is the volume of water, or vice versa. Volume of water is the volume of voids, obviously. And this means that the degree of saturation is 1, or 100%. But remember that for calculations, you're always going to use decimals. Then at the end of the problem, you may want to express your answer, let's say for a water content, in percentage. But you're always going to perform calculations with the decimal versions of your values. Okay, this is a good one right here. If you know or if you're given any value of mass, for example the mass of the dry soil or the mass of the wet soil, right? If you're given any value of the mass or any value of the volume, for example the volume of voids or the volume of water, etc or any value of weight, the weight of the soil or the weight of the water in the soil. If you're given any of these, then this problem is called a type 1 problem. And you cannot assume a value for mass or a value for volume or a value for weight of any component. You cannot assume. You have to proceed with what you know to solve the problem. However, If you do not, if you do not know any value of mass, any value of volume, or any value of weight, then this is called a type 2 problem. And you can assume a value of mass, for, like, for example, a value of, for the mass of the solids, or a value for the mass of the soil, 
or the weight of the soil or the volume of water or any of that. Um, you can assume any of these, but perhaps the best one, if you had to choose one for all problems, is to assume that the volume of solids is one meter cubed. Okay? Now, just to kind of say a few more things here. Let's say that you do not know any of these values, right? But you know, for example, the mass density of the soil. Well, if that's the case, that continues to be a type 2. Because the mass density is not a mass, it's not a volume, and it's not a weight. All right, we proceed. So we are up here, right? We drop to number six. Draw the phase diagram, which looks like this, and fill it. Okay, phase diagram. Air, water, solids, mass, volume, right? These are the masses, these are the volumes. This is the total volume and this is the total mass. All right, two things to say here. First, the volume of voids is the volume of air and the volume of water together. These two sum to the volume of voids. The mass of air can always be assumed to be zero. If the soil is saturated, then there's no air. And in that case, this is a true zero. But if the soil is, let's say, moist, or dry, you know that there's air in the voids in that, those two cases. Well, what happens? You can assume that the mass of that air is zero because the density of air is very low. That's why we have this squiggle here. So you can always, always have a zero here. Now, what about the volume of air? The volume of air can only be zero if the soil is saturated because there's no air. But if the soil is most moist or dry, then there is air, and therefore you cannot write a zero here. Number seven involves a very powerful step. It's very simple, but it turns out that many students I have seen forget this formula, which is the formula for mass density, it's mass over volume. The mass density of something is the mass of something divided by the volume of that something. So, the way to use this formula to fill the diagram is as follows. If you have, for example, the volume of solids, as an example, right, you can get immediately the mass of solids using this formula, because you have this one and you have this one. How do you have this one? You know it, right? You either assumed it to be 2.65 grams per cc or you were given it either directly or via the GS, as we said before in step number three. So, if you have this number, that is this value, then this value is simply rho s vs, given that this is vs. What about going the opposite way? Well, if you have, for example, the mass of solids, the volume of solids can be obtained like this. The volume of solids is the mass of solids divided by the rho of solids. It's simply the use of this equation. Now, why do I write x's? to indicate that you can substitute that x for an s, for this uh, row in the phase diagram, but you can also exchange it for a w. So if you have this number, you can get this number, provided that you know rho w. And if you have this number, you can get that number, provided that you know rho w, which you know to be one gram per cc, or 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Finally, Number eight, this is a shortcut equation. Um, I don't recommend that people memorize shortcut equations unless they're very simple. And this is by far the simplest one for phase relationships. Degree of saturation times weight ratio equals water content times specific gravity of solids. All in decimal. Use decimals, right? So for example, 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.2, etc. Right for 20%, but don't write 20%. Write 0.2. And so, if you begin a phase relationship problem uh, as a strategy, you may find that it simply involves the use of this, of this equation. You can solve the problem simply by using this equation and then proceed to the next problem. For example, in a test.